Howdy, howdy, howdy. Look what we got here. GTR 230. What a beautiful, beautiful ski. I liked it the minute I laid eyes on it. Opened it up. Um, everything on here says 2020. I believe even the registration is 2020. Uh, however, if you go to Reva Motorsports or Sea-Doo Parts House, which are um, two vendors that I typically purchase from, uh, they have a list for every ski that was made uh, specifically for sea -Doo, And uh, you can go through the schematics of what your ski has if you break parts, what the correct name is, and a whole lot of other cool stuff. So when I was doing the research uh, for this one to do spark plugs and oil, everything I did was for the 2020 model. However, this is a 1503 engine. And I did a little more research, went back just one year to 2019, and the green is the color that they offered in 2019. So I think that they have or had an issue where they maybe didn't sell a ski in 2019 or manufactured it too late. So they advertised and sold it and registered it as a, as a 2020. So whatever the case is, Sea-Doo doesn't, on the parts list, they don't show the green as a 2020 model. I think it's blue or something like that. Nonetheless, since I have enough um, inventory for spark plugs and oil filters, I have what I need. Uh, I was thinking this was going to be the 1630, but this is the 1503. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Uh, I took the seats off. Pretty simple standard stuff. We can go over the tools that you're going to need. Uh, here you can see I've already taken off a couple of um, ignition modules. I have a spark plug here. It's the DCPR8E, which is the 1503. This one here has a little oil burn at the bottom of it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. And some filing on it. Typically, when I see these plugs, they're squeaky clean. So, um, especially for the 1503. So. Uh, I would say it's running fine. It's not as clean as it could be. Uh, perhaps fuel or something else. It's not my ski, so I couldn't tell you what was going on here. But the plug looks all right, but I've definitely seen them cleaner. This only has about 25 to 30 hours on the ski. You're going to want the T30 bit to remove the bolts that hold down the modules as well as the uh, seat and engine compartment area. Here I have two oil filters. I'm probably going to use the 1503, but that is a 300 oil filter. You always want to replace the old rings. It's just the thing to do. Uh, I have my um, torque wrench. I like to follow the specs listed and always use a little bit of blue thread locker. Here I already had set out the spark plugs for the 300 with the oil filter. But I also have these 1503s, so those are the 1630s, and I also have the 1503s. A couple other tools to help me do the job, but it's relatively simple. Last but not least, you're going to need your trusty, dusty oil extractor. You can see here I've already started extracting some oil. You got a decent amount out. You always want to get the engine up to operating temperature. I usually go just a little under that. I run the engine for about a minute and a half, and uh, I just go with that. There's a little view on the inside. It looks nice and clean on the inside. I really like how they have the uh, a nice view of your uh, fluid level and the Sea-Doo Sparks is in such a bad location even though it's visible and you really can't tell you know, where you should be at so that's a pleasant surprise nice to see I'm sure it's been like that for a while especially on the 1503 engines it's always like that so I just got done working on the spark and so that's a, a nice visual uh, change for me the first two bolts on this cover here uh, have nuts at the back side the rest of them have nuts on the back side, but they're actually held in by the, uh, the upper half or hole of the ski. So I'm just going to remove this. Uh, you just want to go around it and unscrew all of the bolts, and then we'll lift this right off. Now that it's lifted off, I can go ahead and pull out the last module. And then we'll move on to taking out all of the spark plugs, double-checking that I have all the oil off. And what I'll do for this customer is just make sure that all of the uh, bands that I can get to are are uh, tight at least to spec you sometimes you have an issue where some of these are are loose or come loose or loosen up over time so I'll do that courtesy and just try to give uh, the owner of this beautiful ski every opportunity to uh, enjoy it for quite some time so I've struck it just about all the oil I think I can get so I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, dipstick back on the spark plugs socket size is a 5 8 so you're looking for more necessary tools I also have an, uh, 
couple of adapters on here to give me up and over the customer's uh, fiberglass. You don't want to be swinging a wrench and chipping the sides if you don't have to. Another very useful tool is the magnet. Let's see if we can get a close-up of this. It's all right. Just be careful when you hold them. If you take the engine to operating temperature, these spark plugs will have some heat on them. So uh, be a little careful of that. You can go without saying that all of these are the 1503 spark plugs with the same number. So we're going to go ahead and go back with these. One of the biggest changes uh, for me, having come across um, keeping the caps on, so I thought that's pretty interesting. Typically we unscrew the caps off. But I took a look inside of here, and um, it looks like it's made for the caps on, which is uh, nice to know. So one of the things you want to do is just make sure the spark plugs are gapped. I know that the 1503s are usually gapped at 0 .28, 0 .30. The plugs that I pulled out of here were all the way up to 35, even a little more, maybe 36. Uh, so I put these back in at the um, at the 30 and uh, gapping, and so I'll just leave it at that. Stick to what works. I mainly made that decision uh, based on the manual and the way those plugs looked. They should have been a little cleaner for the amount of hours that they had on them. Typically, um, CDU, Rotax, BRP, whatever you want to call it, they don't recommend changing this stuff until 100 hours. So at 20, she's still a little new. So uh, the owner just, you know, wants to wants to keep good maintenance, and I don't blame them on that. Uh, I don't know if there's such thing, such thing as over maintenance. Some people might say that's way too soon, but the oil looked like, uh, you know, it didn't look clean enough to say, no, don't change it. So it is what it is, you know. It's, when it's your ski, you do what you feel like is best compared to what the manual says. And sometimes you take a risk or sometimes you take no risk at all. If you're new to this, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is before you put the ignition module back on, is you're going to want to plug it in first and then go ahead and seat it all the way. Make sure you hear the snap and flip the ground wire back over. Go ahead and press it down. I like to set that in place. Usually things tend to sit where they should or used to be, so that's a good indicator of how to put everything back how you got it. So I'm going to set the camera down, double check all of the seats on the ignition module. It's not bad for a one-handed job, but set the phone down, use two hands, be smart. So they're all back in with a little bit of uh, blue Loctite um, torqued down to spec. So the spark plug portion of this uh, job is complete. I'm going to go ahead and make sure all of the hoses are nice and uh, tight and then uh, add some oil. Everybody seemed uh, tight enough in there, so we'll go on to the oil portion of the oil change. I'm not a fan of the Sea-Doo oil. I'm more of a um, Mobile One 4T Racing. That's usually what I use on my skis. But since I purchased the 300 kit, this is what came along with it. So let's get on to the filter and oil. Here we have a 5 16 inch 8 millimeter bit. Um, this is for the star bolts. It's on very nicely to the oil cap, oil reservoir cap. So it's definitely the 300 filter. So we'll go back with the 300 filter. To remove the filter, I stuck with the same socket. Grab the 13 wrench. You'll notice that the reason you'll need a wrench is because the nut is on here this way. So you can't put a socket on it. So you want to grab the wrench. And uh, I typically palm the socket in my hand and hold it to the back of the filter cap and then just spin the wrench around to get the nut off. For the cap, Sidu used a black and red. The replacement kit uses red on red. The thicker o-ring goes in the groove at the bottom of the cap and the thinner o-ring goes at the top of the cap. Um, they're both needed. I actually blew a thin o-ring and had an oil leak so I had to replace that uh, thinner top o-ring. So you're definitely going to need both of them. Make sure they're oiled up before you put them on. The old O-rings felt a little brittle to me. The black ones did. So um, I don't know what that means, but that's just how it felt to me. I put the nut back on the bolt. I believe they put it on upside down to honor the uh, build. If 
from the land down under being out of Australia or something. I don't know. That one, the nut on there had red Loctite, so you're going to want to replace that with red Loctite. I'm going to go ahead and screw this down and torque it. I also tend to put oil <clears throat> in the reservoir and then put the oil filtering cap on uh, just so that uh, there's a, more of a chance for it to be primed. Uh, may or may not work, it's just something that I do. I probably shouldn't say work, it's more like matter, does it matter, you know. So the cap is in and torqued down. The final step is to add oil and in the cap there and check the dipstick to the proper level. Start it up, double check it, add again, and you're done. See if I can get a shot of it nailed right in the middle. There you have it. You can kind of see it there. That's getting better, so... Shut her down after about 5 to 10 seconds. We'll check the oil. And there you have it. Uh, oil change and spark plugs on a 2020 GTR. And as I mentioned before, this is titled as a 2020 and registered as a 2020, but it must have been built a little sooner than they expected because it's not the 1603 um, engine that the schematics say they were putting in and just detuning in the uh, in the 230s. So go we'll ahead and pull the key. We'll get the top back on, seats back on, and this thing is ready to go home. So what I did was put a little bit of wax on the surface underneath this uh, seat mount and uh, ski pole mount. I left all of the screws in, so what I'm going to do is just pull them all up and back a little bit. Let them fall into the holes that they uh, will be eventually seated into. And uh, then screw them down to torque. And then I'll put the front two ones on. And then try to go into a little uh, cross pattern with them as I tighten it. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything too terribly uh, precise as far as the pattern. It's just uh, you want it to screw down evenly. And I'll go ahead and wipe that plastic down. And it's looking good. The one thing I do is I stay off the uh, impact uh, tools, especially the, the drills. I saw on JP Racing's channel they have a nice uh, impact wrench. I think that's going to be more suitable for those of you guys that want to get through these uh, the drilling or screwing process faster. You definitely want to use like an impact wrench over an impact gun. That looks a little nicer. Let's go ahead and get that seat on.